let's graph this function using transformations. Well, first of all, you have to think about your base graph. Your base graph is going to be x cubed. And remember, x cubed looks something like this. That's what x cubed is. It's not, well, maybe I should redraw that. That didn't do a very good job. Here's what x cubed looks like. If I take, let me take a little bit more time to do this. x cubed is going to be start in the center. It's going to go up 1 over 1, up 2 over 8, left 1, down 1, left 2, down 8, something like that. So your graph is going to be steep, like kind of like a parabola on the right side, but then it's going to flip over on the left side because it's cubed, which means that when you plug in a negative, you're still going to get a negative answer out. Yep. So that's, that's your base graph, but actually what, I, what I'd like to do is I like to consider your base graph negative x cubed. And so that, that making the function negative flips it over the x-axis. So your graph actually is going to do this. It's going to actually go like this. There's your base graph, negative x cubed. Because now all you have to do to graph the problem at hand is you have to go ahead and just do these two transformations and what does minus x do to it or minus one inside with the x do to it it moves it right one and what is minus two down on the two. outside it moves it down two okay. so this red graph remember I gotta take every point every one of these points but I always take this I call this like the center handle where do you get and those two points from these two points right here came from just plugging in points. Remember thinking that you go left one, it's a cubic, so if you go left one, you go up one, because it's a cubic. Right. If you want oh, you right one, origin. you're going, right, you're always starting from the origin, starting from this handle right here. I'll mm -hmm. make it an X. That point right there is kind of like your handle. So that point now moves right one and down two. So it goes right one and down two. So that point now is right here. Let me erase these other things. Oops, shouldn't erase the red one. That point, let me put that red graph back there. That point right here is the handle. And so that was there and it moved right one down two, and so does everything else. So it's it's sort of like your graph is like that. That's the graph of this green function right there. Okay. Let me so let me redraw this real quick for you. All right, I'll erase everything and let's let's redo that. So we're just looking at the green graph. Remember this this graph shifts. It's a cubic graph, which means it's going to go Oh, well, it's a cubic graph. So let's start bit. it here. Mm -hmm. Instead of being at the origin, it's going to be right one and down two, so it's going to be right there. That point's going to be on my graph, which is, I'll draw an arrow to it, that point is one comma negative two. And now, this negative right here, what that does is instead of it going right one, up one, it's going to go left one, up one, yeah, okay. and right one, down one. That's what the graph's going to do instead. And then right two, down eight, so it'd be like down there somewhere. Mm -hmm. So your graph is flipped like um, that. So you're just showing me another way to do it without having to graph the yes. first line. Yeah. All right, there it, we go. There's a couple ways you can do these problems, but what they want you to what they want you to understand is what the base graph is and then how to transform it. But they to don't, get you to don't the have to show the base graph, do you? No, you don't have to show the base graph. Okay. No, they just want your formula. And then and here's always a good thing to do. Always plug in your points, make sure you did it right. What's that point right there? That point is zero comma negative two negative one. Oh yeah. And what's that point right there? Uh, negative two, two negative four comma one two three negative three. Let's check okay. if those points oh, work. Okay. If I plug in zero for x, because remember that's x. Yeah. I should get negative one for y. When I plug in zero, what's zero minus one? Is negative one. Mm -hmm. What's negative one cubed? Uh, negative one. Still negative one. What's the negative of negative one? Uh, positive, positive one. one. What's one minus two? Uh, negative one. Negative one. And that's what I should have gotten because that's what y is. Let's try this one. When I plug in two, what do I get? 
Uh, wait, is that two squared? Wait. Two. No, I'm plugging in two for, oh, x. for x. Okay. Yeah. You then two you get minus one is, is one. One cubed is. Uh, one. One negative one negative minus one. two is. Uh, negative three. Negative three, and there okay. it is, right there. It's a negative three. All right. That's always. I would always check with a couple points on your graph to make sure that you did it right. Now, also another point would have been if I go two over, I would have gone because it's a cubic. I would have gone eight down. So that point right there would be. Inst so the the point right there would be two over would be three comma, and then I'm going eight down from negative two. It'd be three comma negative ten. That'd be another point. And then how do you know that it goes this way instead of? That way. You know because of the negative there. You know okay. it flips, it goes this way instead of this way. Let me change the colors. Instead of this way because of the negative. The negative flips it. Okay. It flips it vertically. So it okay. took this and it did right. this to it. That's how you know.